how you doing today? I am doing an awesome client session. I'm going to be sharing distance energy healing, psychic wisdom, and we've got some amazing goals here. I'm going to read these to you guys and we'll get started. I want to thank the client so much for the opportunity to connect with you. I, I know there's going to be people here in these goals of yours and they're going to resonate. So thank you for the open-mindedness to share. And if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, go to my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Okay, I'm reading your goals and I'm going to get started. So you say, I would like to know more about my soul origins and who my higher self is. What is my purpose or... How do I follow my heart to do something more with my life? A calling from my spirit. Okay. Soul origins. Who is your higher self? Who is your higher self? And what is your purpose? As far as what can you do with your life that is inspired by your own spirit? The essence of who you are. Even coming from the origins of who you are. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Feels deep to me. <clears throat> I'm very excited, but everything's going to calming down and getting very deep. Okay, so I'm going to relax, tune in, and we'll see what comes up here. First question, what are your soul origins? I'm asking God, okay, guide us here. How, how do, would you like me to express an answer to this question? There's a man made out of rock, and he's made out of pieces of rock that are put together to create one form, made out of many rocks, okay? And he looks like, um, you know, head, shoulders, arms, legs. And he touches my hand. At first, it's a little bit clenching. And then it relaxes. And he shows me a barren planet. And the sky is at times blue, but it's grayish blue. And sometimes it seems purple into pink. It doesn't feel like the type of environment where a human being could thrive. There's something different about the atmosphere and what creates the sky colors. And you represent actually loneliness. And my guides are immediately saying, okay, so you want to tell this client that their soul origin is a representation of a man made out of many rocks who wanders a desolate planet where nobody could live and represents loneliness. <laughs> I say that's what's coming to me. I don't have an explanation for why it's revealing itself like this, but that's the way that it feels, okay? So let's continue to explore. Okay, you would not be able to put a shovel to this ground. I mean, it is so solid. You couldn't break through this ground. And as this man made out of many rocks, you express a personality much like a human being. A longing for people. And I see when, when that longing comes to the surface, I see actually a choir of people, like 24 people that sing at different octaves. <laughs> it, it's actually a heavenly sound that they create. And you tell me that there's something very special when people come together. Because if we only had one person singing at one octave, um, then we wouldn't be a, as enriched. If 24 people came together, it sang um, this holy sound that when you combine the voices, it creates this experience and it starts to move up and down your 
many rock pieces and you start to vibrate and I see something changing about your appearance. But then the people disappear and the stones come back into a hardened shape and you look like yourself, this rock man, and you wander a desolate environment. And you wonder if you belong anywhere. Why would you be here of all places when you wander? And where do you belong truly? Why would your purpose be to be here of all places? And perhaps there's a parallel between this message, how we are seeing you in this desolate place, the rock man, um, and then your life on earth. Maybe you feel like you're looking for your place here on earth and something that's familiar to your soul is people coming together and sharing their many voices creates a beautiful song and perhaps that moves your heart and that's what you are looking for and something that would spark um, more of the, the, the genuine nature of who you are and bring you to life here on earth otherwise if you don't have this, earth could be like a desolate place and you could feel quite lonely here looking for this. <clears throat> so my guides are saying, so this is not a representation then of your soul origin. And I say, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that because it's not saying this is your soul origin or this is not your soul origin. This is just simply presenting this message and who's to say that you there's not some familiarity to your soul about some of these themes i don't know hmm you can't remember your soul origin you can't remember That's absolutely the next thing. Your soul can't remember your soul origin. Is that possible? I reach my hand through the many rocks and I touch your heart. And you represent being forgetful. I forgot and I can't remember. Like a sad forgetfulness. I can't remember where I came from. I can't remember me. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. This is kind of serious, actually. I feel like there's one too many layers here with one too many influential sounds. And we need to start clearing these sounds out of here because it's getting in the way of you hearing the sound of your own soul. That's where the forgetfulness is coming from. Your soul didn't forget. It's just what you're translating into this human world has too many layers of other sounds. And it's very hard for you to hear the sound of yourself anymore to even know what that sounds like. And I do feel an experience of being tired here. Of being kind of on a never-ending walk of feeling lost and the reason why you're even here is just one too many sounds in the way to be honest you guys are really wanting to me to say this is not your soul origin i don't know why i'm being stubborn <laughs> i just When I translate the energy of this space, it doesn't, it doesn't say one way or another. It doesn't say yes or no. They keep bringing this up for a reason. And I can just believe whatever they tell me. But I like to listen to the sound of the energy to interpret it for myself. So my guys are saying this is not your soul origin, okay? But I'm saying I want to hear more. I want to hear more about this to really know who you are and to know who you are to me 
is kind of knowing an origin of your self-expression because I experience us as part of all time. Like I, Abby, right now, what you see is what you get of all expressions of myself and all time and all eternities all combined into this one emanation. And this one emanation as it parallels many other emanations, as it parallels everything, as it parallels source and etc. So can I be right now in this present moment a representation of my soul origin? Can I right now be that? Can't you right now, as you are, just simply as you are, be a representation of your soul origin as a complete collective anomaly of everything you've ever been, ever will be, and every version of what that could even look like, and every version of eternity, that it could all be a composite of you right now, that you represent what is the most specialist <laughs> representation of yourself you could ever know or not know. That's why I don't want to be too hasty on this. And maybe they're just pushing me to say what I just said. That you need to look in the mirror and see into your own eyes that you carry your soul origin with you in everything that you are. What you don't like about yourself, what you do, and what you don't even know about yourself is the mystery you're unraveling as much as you could unravel in a lifetime. <sighs> Something about this means... There's meaning in your heart about it. I can feel that your heart is warmer, okay? I, I tell you, I'm going to listen to some of these layers and we're going to start to remove sounds that have no association with you, okay? Because I feel that it's... There is an unknown about you and I feel like what we're trying to achieve here, to achieve it, we need to clear out these distracting sounds. <laughs> maybe they're related to other lifetimes, maybe they're related to this lifetime, maybe they're related to your soul origin, I don't know. But I need to clear this out so you can start to hear the sound of yourself and what does that sound like? I feel like there's a clue when I when you you represent you show me 24 people and they all sing a different note at a different like really super low to really super high and it's it's perfect okay and then you blend all this together and it's just like this holy emanation and you feel your whole body goes like all over the place is vibrating it's it's laughing it's crying it's it's ticklish it's, it's screaming it's, it's like so many responses because it it hits everything like it hits everything you just <laughs> like this okay because this holy sound it just reaches everything that you are and every part of your soul and every part of your physical body and your energy body everything so what if that is your soul origin, is what that is? So I'm going to place that in your heart because I want to feel your heart become warmer, okay? <sighs> You're not going to let... You would want that. You would want to orchestrate that for the world, but you would not... It's not like you keep a safe distance between letting that into yourself, actually. That's also a clue. Because for you to open up what is your soul origin inside yourself, you're going to have to open your heart to what are reflections of you, okay? This is a reflection of you, even if it's 24 different people and 24 different souls, it's still part of, of your um, inspiration, okay? So I want to take the inspiration and I want to put it in your heart, but you're creating a distance here. Almost like the familiarity of this rock man who walks the desolate plain um, it has, is not capable of letting all that sound in because you're not used to it. It's like take someone who's lived in a cave for, you know, 20 years and then put them into a sunny day. It's going to be over freaking whelming. It's going to take time to adapt and adjust. There's another being appearing here. You, you know what? You're pushing away the answers. That's what this is. 
And what's good is you're wanting the answers. And so for us to get to it, part of it has, you have to let it inside of you. You have to bring the memories back. You have to welcome it in. But it seems like perhaps the, the real meaning of love um, might be uh, quite vulnerable for you. And maybe it's, it's the one thing that you are is the one thing that you are not which is the one thing that you are. So what what are you working with when it comes to genuine love within your heart? And maybe there's one too many bee stings there, you know? And if that's the case, then it would be again hard to let that origin of sound in to be who and what you are. This is a complex scenario. This is a this is a life circumstance this is a soul level thing that we could answer this question but we have to we have to do some energy work here okay so who's this being here well he has a um, really thick kind of like bul bulbous type curls um to shoulder length hair it's white <clears throat> he has kind of a a grayish complexion to it's not gray so much as it's just like Caucasian skin but it's a bit of a grayish complexion to it and he wears a, a gray it's got a V shape that comes down to front and it's kind of like a suit in a way but it's more maybe outer space looking more actually a mix between maybe an outer space outfit, <laughs> like maybe a suit of a, a, maybe a leader of an outer space group, <laughs> um, mixed with something of a mage, something s like uh, fantasy. Uh, everything is completely numb and neutral, so you can't hear the sound. I even feel a sensation of pushing this being away. And pushing, pushing the the twenty four voices away, and pushing the love away, pushing the answers away. That way, you can be familiar with forgetfulness, and you can be lonely, and you can wander forever without knowing what truly your spirit's role is for this earth. So you got to work on this. I'm telling you, this isn't just born. Okay, this comes from. This is developed, okay? This, this, um, what I'm picking up here is developed. And it can be developed over lifetimes. It could have been developed just in this lifetime, but it doesn't just, you don't just have this going on, okay? It's not just your style. It actually developed into becoming your familiar state. And so, okay. Really, you're really putting, you're, you're using these rocks on the defense because you do not, you are your own worst nightmare when it comes to the success here because I'm bringing in this um, ushy gushy love stuff and you're getting tougher and stronger and you're pushing it, you're letting it bounce off of you, okay? That tells me you've been hurt one too many times in your heart. It's very hard to understand who this being is. I could leave your energy field and then go look at this outside of yourself, but there's a reason I'm called to look at it through your energy field. Because we need to, we need to, you need to want to know who this is. You need to stop blocking yourself. Now you need to let this information in. So if I just leave your energy field, go tell you a bunch of stuff, it's not actually the solution. The solution is you need to be vulnerable right now and you need to say, I want this. And then you need to fall apart when it comes in and it was the one thing you wanted for so long and you wouldn't let yourself have it. You want your soul origin, but it's the most vulnerable thing you could ever access because it is a memory of pure love. Do you understand? I don't even get to know what it is because you've got to become vulnerable and then it will start to reveal itself. And it seems to me like it's going to reveal itself in your present life. That you will be a memory 
reborn in this life of your soul origin. But that is up to you, okay? Because you're going to start working on unresolved heart memory memories that have hurt the heart, okay? Do you want to know who this guy is? I mean, just look at him. I mean, can't he can't we say that there's something peculiar about him? Like, can't we want to know just by looking at him? Okay, who's this guy to you? You're not going, you're really like a rock. You're not going to answer that question. You're not even going to acknowledge that you would ever want to have the answer to that question. Okay, so what does your higher self want to do now about you? <laughs> because you're stubborn, right? <laughs> you are stubborn about letting this in. And we're talking about not in here. Your conscious mind is easy, okay? The deeper you go, the more vulnerable you become. And I want to hear what those vulnerable voices are saying. I want to hear them be stubborn and say, I can't do this. And then you will wonder in here in your mind, well, of course I want to know who that is. Of course I do. Well, you don't actually. You don't actually want to know who that is. So we need to get everybody on board. It's easy to say something in here. A lot harder to have action with it. If we can get this deeper stuff to be on board, you're going to have follow through on a more profound level through this session, okay? Otherwise, it's superficial and thin and it's like working with a paper versus, um, I don't know, super awesome geometric shape glowing in the universe or some cosmic meaning. Okay. Your higher self is kind of funny and asks if we need to have an intervention. And I, <clears throat> I say I feel the answer is yes to this. And your higher self creates a room where you're surrounded by um, different meanings. They don't necessarily all have faces. One of them is the 24 voices, okay? And one of them is a strange question mark man. Um, we're even going to put a representation of yourself as man made out of rock here, okay? So you can look into your own eyes as this. And one's going to be a representation of your heart. And then we'll just call this your higher self, which is invisible. And everybody's going to tell you why they love you. Okay, so are you ready for this? Because <sighs> no amount of anything that you are going to do to deflect is going to work. So these 24 voices are going to seep into every crack and crevice of your many rocks. And they're going to reach your heart. Okay. And so they're going to start singing for you. It's actually pretty gentle and it doesn't want to hurt you at all. In fact, it would, it would wait for all eternity, it would never want to overwhelm you or hurt you. And so its truth is gentle. It's just whenever you want to receive this, there's no rush, no hurry. But the fact that you're going to give this a try is that there's a space created that you are open to this through this intervention. Your higher self is on board. We're creating this. You're receiving something of this. And the voice is asked that you remove the rocks, please. Like really nice like that. Please, can you please remove these rocks now? Please, can you do that for us? Please do that for us. And there is kind of an agreement, but there's still some neutrality with you. 
And there's this man here with a strange outfit. Hmm. He's not soft by any means. He's not gentle. He's um, particular. He's um, crit critical. He doesn't speak with words. He uses his eyes to communicate. I keep showing that he has like a radar or something in his brain and it just goes around and around and it's picking up a signal and it's sending signals in and out of his head. And it, he's communicating with you through this. That's all that he emanates, okay? Now you're looking at yourself, a man of rocks. He starts to remove all the rocks so you can see what you look like without them in the way. It's very weird. You look like um, a scarecrow. Like you look like a man made out of like straw or hay. And you actually dance and you're funny. You are really funny and you, you can put on a good show. I mean, he even smiles and he does like some kind of jump and leap and twirl in the air and lands gracefully on his um, feet and he presents this um, performance to you. Makes you feel kind of weird, actually. Like you could be, um, could be flexible and limber and, and, um, a creative, uh, a, an entertainer like this. So let's see what your heart wants to say. Your heart really has been swallowing its words for a long time. And it feels like there's one too many words swallowed in your throat. And so your heart has a hard time speaking because it's there's so many words in your throat that it, it, it can't actually speak through all the words that you've been swallowing down. And I say, if you could try to make a sound, what would it sound like? The heart whispers, hear me. And then the heart extends a hand and says, I am here for you. It's like, talk to me, but don't just talk to me. Let me respond to you too sometimes. So the words can feel fluid back and forth between us. And what does your higher self have to say? Carousel becomes the eyes of every person sitting here, every representation here. Carousel becomes your eyes. Something in the way is, is what can only be described as an inconceivable truth about you. And it wouldn't fit into any kind of anything we would be familiar with here of an idea of what a soul origin or a higher self would look like or what it would be like. You know, we'd see an Indian deity and be like, that would be the most incredible higher self you could ever be. But you would represent something that, would, that wouldn't be conceivable to a human mind.
and you're trying to fit yourself into a small box, basically. But to you, it would be a big box, but it's not really that big of a box. You need to be more yourself, and you need to you need to let more of the sound of who and what you truly are come out from the inside of you and don't keep it stuck in there and don't put up a bunch of rocks around you to push away what's on the outside because there are things in this world that are a reminder of who you are too. You're starting to break because there's something really upsetting you. Start to, like I hear an earthquake, like a big crack happening. And you're very, 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 very angry. I mean, you're like ra the wrath of God angry. And you contain it in a silent body, basically like a human that holds your, he sustains yourself and keeps it quiet. But really there's a raging earthquake and a massive, like the sound of God's wrath going on. And you, you will neutralize that sound at every flipping turn. Because you would define that as, as a problem or it doesn't represent the, the beautiful extraordinariness of the, the voices, the singing voices. It would represent something that likes to whip children, you know, likes to beat people. But it's like I see a, a fight in a bar and one man is basically overstepping his grounds to another man's girlfriend. And so the man is protecting his relationship and the girlfriend and stands up and, and literally kicks the crap out of this other guy who overstepped his grounds. Like there's something about um, a powerful state of right and wrong and aggressively so. I mean, we're talking aggressively so. So that is never forgotten in the eyes of the other. But you don't want to be that. You don't want to be a wake-up call for people. You don't want to be a wake-up call because wake-up calls are loud. They're annoying. Like I hear um, a siren that is people are covering their ears. They don't know what to do. The siren is ringing down their head and their ears. And, and sirens are annoying. Like, you don't want to be a wake-up call. What if you are a wake-up call? What if your soul origin is representing a certain element of nature that is natural? And you're holding all these rocks together. You're holding all this neutrality. You're holding all this, in a, in a way, numbness. You're rejecting what you are. And what if what you are is a wake-up call? Who wants to be around one of those? Who wants to be friends with one of those? Intimidating, scary. Maybe, maybe feels like um, you took it too far. Like, what's the concept of a hurricane or a tornado? Does, do they take it too far? Did that tornado take it too far? Did that hurricane take it too far? Or were they just natural events, natural phenomenon? And as natural phenomenon, they are what they are. We can hate them all day long, but there's a reason for their existence. There's a goodness to them as well. The fire that destroys whole, you know, whole forests, like at that bad, terrible, awful fire. But these things are natural events. They naturally occur. What if you yourself are a natural event that naturally occurs and that your calling is pulling from an origins place within you, that you are a loud siren, that you are a wake up call, that you are a representation of something of strength. 
a strong and solid stance, a strong and solid reckoning. Would you walk alone? No, nobody wants to walk with a tornado, that's for sure. It's possible that what you represent happens to, to associate with a lone walker. <laughs> It is your lone path. And now how will you be responsible for being such a loud statement? How would you achieve that? What's your higher self have to say? It's like everybody likes soft and gentle, adorable little bunny rabbits, right? Nobody likes tornadoes and hurricanes when it's destroying your family and your life and your very world. But what if um, there's a reckoning that is the only essential way for respect to exist? There are people to understand what uh, genuine caring or genuine thoughtfulness, uh, a better societal structure. This doesn't feel to me like you need to go... Um, get an AK-47 and shoot people down and make a statement. No, this is like um, a strong and intelligent and bold mountain of energy. This is uh, you embracing your power. You embracing your power and what the meaning of power is to your soul. It feels like you struggle with walking alone and also it feels like powerlessness, which would be an anti-representation of your soul origin because tornadoes require power and hurricanes and you know those earthquakes and those sorts of things require powerful energy and you are a powerful energy and you need to remember the sound of what that is but there's also this humble silence that is strength too and intelligence is like a wisdom It's like the wisdom of a mountain. It's like the strength of time that this mountain endures. The strength of time, like the mountain is strong in time. The mountain sees a great many beginnings and ends before it ever began or ended. Like it, it represents um, a longevity and a very long time. And sometimes we can lose our strength in those very long times and we, we find ourselves confused as to why we, we're still a mountain or why can't we be something else already or how much longer or how much more patience. This is where what, what I meant to share to get us jump started into an answer it's just let me just ask one more thing about your purpose then what would be a good way of explaining your purpose it's it would be like this almost like your purpose was to absorb a view a viewpoint a vision of through the experience of your existence as a human being. Uh, almost like you're just absorbing like a sponge this lifetime. And it wouldn't really um, compute because it was being absorbed. And in that absorption, there was a silence to it. It's like a baby absorbs like a sponge its surroundings. What does it actually know about any of these surroundings? Yet it yet babies absorb and they become quite perceptive. As you're absorbing, you're quite perceptive. I don't feel like you I don't feel like you know yet. 
And perhaps your power isn't required yet in this life. Perhaps you're still absorbing something of the energy, of the exchanges, of the memories, of what worked and didn't work, of the lack of, of the success of all of this is an absorbing, like a, it's like a circulation, it's a winding up of sorts until it wound up tight enough that something just goes pow and you just release a something from inside of yourself. I don't know how I would define it. It's not a classic situation we're working with here. One thing's for sure, you. I would highly recommend instead of just absorbing to make a conscious decision to feel your emotional vulnerability. Because while you're strong, you can be soft too. And that requires strength as well. So don't kid yourself, crying like a baby also requires strength to give in to that kind of emotion. When you want to put up a wall or be a wall, you need to cry more. And there's more than just power. There's softer lifetimes too that is going to bring harmony to your being because that's also familiar to your soul, okay? It seems like this man representing a, the, the magic as well as the scientific and also the cosmic um, can be a mirror to who you are and a clue to your soul origins as well. As a man made out of rock completely. It shows how he can change from stone to something softer too. You're flexible. The struggle of the human and the balance of the heart is part of what you're enduring. And your higher self. What about the scarecrow as well? The, the funny entertainer. Your higher self is full of ideas too, but seems to be invisible at times. I think these are all clues to you discovering and finding yourself in this life. There's a lot more to you. Again, there seems to be a lot of shells worth cracking here when it comes to the sounds of... There's this sounds that have built up around you. And I want to break those sounds down so we can hear something else. Like, what, what else is there that isn't related to these buildups? It takes time to go through those layers, so... I want to thank you so much for this experience and really um, interesting process of discovering you. And thank you again for sharing. I hope you guys out there, I hope you found this to be interesting and supportive of your own path. All right. Have a great day, everybody.